In question five, we're dealing with an economy that is in a recession with high unemployment and low output. Part one asks us to draw a graph of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply to illustrate the current situation. Be sure to include the aggregate demand curve, the short run aggregate supply curve, and the long run aggregate supply curve. All right, well, now we know how to do that. We resort into our standard aggregate supply and aggregate demand curve. On the x-axis, we have the quantity of output y. On the y-axis, we have our price level p. As always, the long run aggregate supply curve will be vertical since it's determined by long run factors such as the accumulation of labor, capital, land, resources, technology, and the aggregate productivity level. And it will dissect the x-axis at the natural level of output y star. In contrast, the upward sloping aggregate supply curve AS1 will dissect the downward sloping aggregate demand curve AD1 at a point off and to the left of the long run aggregate supply curve, thus resulting into a lower level of output Y1 and the difference between Y1 and Y star will be a recessionary gap. All right, uh, we're going to answer part B and C together since they're very closely related. Uh, we're being asked to identify an open market operation that would restore the economy to its natural rate and draw a graph of the money market to illustrate the effect of this open market operation. Well, as we know, the Fed has a multitude of ways uh, with which they can um, affect the equilibrium interest rate, such as changing the reserves of the banks, uh, using unconventional monetary policy, forward guidance, and so on and so forth. But here we're being asked to um, determine an open market operation. And the standard one is that the Fed will purchase government bonds from the public. This means that the Fed will tell its traders, all right, guys, just go on and keep buying government bonds. Uh, do it as long as it uh, buy as much as it is enough to lower the interest rate to a desired level. All right, to show how this works, we're going to um, uh, draw a simple supply and demand curve for the money market. On the x-axis, we have the quantity of money M. On the y-axis, we have the interest rate R. The economy is being described by the downward sloping money demand curve M1, MD1. And the Fed, through its open market operations, is shifting the money supply curve from M1, MS1, to the left, to M to MS2. And thus, the, the, the new... Money supply curve dissects the money demand curve on a different point that results in the lower interest rate R star, which is the natural rate. All right, part D, we're being asked to draw a graph similar to the one in part A to show the effect of the open market operation on output and the price level. Explain in words why the policy has the effect that you have shown in the graph. All right, so here on the right, I have recreated the first graph. But now, we know that the Fed's purchase of government bonds will stimulate aggregate demand, right? So the aggregate demand curve shifts from AD1 to AD2. And this new curve uh, intersects with the aggregate supply curve on the long run aggregate supply curve, right? So this point here uh, means that the economy is back to its natural level of output Y star. So how does this actually work? It works through the interest rate effect. The Fed ensures that interest rate drops from R1 to R star. So this creates incentives for consumers to consume more, as opposed to uh, saving their money, putting them in the, uh, in the bank, because now they're facing a lower interest rate. So they, they're not gonna make as much interest if they deposit their money. And on the other hand, the, uh, it's also creating an incentive for the businesses to invest in the project since they're facing a lower interest rate and it's easier to get a loan and invest into a project.